Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new or a returning watcher, um, a warm welcome to you and uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share as it's a free way to support the channel and a really easy one, right? Um, talking about liking and subscribing. Um, for those of you who were interested in um, the latest results in uh, me releasing a webinar that I did a few months ago, actually a month ago um, on the 3rd of November, um, I really do want to release this to you guys. But uh, good news and bad news is that we actually ended up getting more than 10% uh, people liking the video. But unfortunately, we didn't reach the 1,000 view target. We only got um, 642, which is actually surprising considering um, the last uh, my last few videos have been getting over 1,000 views. And so on one hand, it's, uh, you know, it's great. On the other, it's not bittersweet. But um, I decided that, you know what, I know you guys have tried and uh, I'm going to release the, uh, the webinar uh, for you to watch. And it really is, you know, about forecasting trends that last for months. Um, and really picking the best uh, pairs that you can um, and it gives you a really a solid foundation when it comes to fundamental analysis it really is a bit of a cheat code in terms of you know just simplifying your process and um, and because you can kind of go down the rabbit hole and get distracted when it comes to fundamental analysis and what to focus on and what not to focus on what on and what the impact of certain um, data will be or is likely to be and so uh, I will because I know you guys have been um, I know a lot of you guys have been um, you know liking the videos and you know and uh, really wanting to see this so um, early Christmas present I guess for you guys I will be releasing this probably tomorrow or Tuesday um, and uh, you know Merry Christmas to you all by the way anyways let's get into uh, the week ahead and uh, in the week ahead, fundamentally, let me just zoom in a bit. And this is from tradingeconomics.com. Uh, so if you're new to this uh, channel, uh, if you go to tradingeconomics.com, uh, click on the week ahead um, tab and or box and you'll see uh, this analysis come up. And you, can, you have a bit of a detailed analysis below, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, well, I'll get into that uh, uh, when I go over the charts. But it will be a busy week ahead for, uh, in the US with the Fed interest rate decision and CPI report taking central stage and the CPI report is going to be the determining factor for um, the strength um, or appreciation or devaluation of the dollar. Um, also the Bank of England, European Central Bank and the Swiss National Bank and the Bank of Mexico will hold monetary policy meetings and the UK uh, will, will release uh, inflation data. Investors will also look at the ZEW um, economic sentiment for Germany and retail sales and industrial production for China. Finally, flash PMI readings will be uh, released for major developed uh, economies, including the US, UK, Euro area and Australia. And so, um, yeah, with that being said, um, let's get into um, some more, some technicals and some a bit more in depth uh, on the fundamentals. So, uh, dollar index and dollar is dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against um, various currencies like the uh, the euro, the yen, and the pound. And um, one of the things you know we should always kind of look at is the dollar index. Um, where if you're taking dollar trades. Um, as confluence and areas of demand um, as confluence on, for example, the uh, the dollar index or any of the dollar crosses. But um, from a technical analysis perspective, um, um, I did put post this in the communities tab. I don't know if many of you saw it, but doing a little bit of analysis on this. And what I've done is I've taken um, uh, the recent low or say recent low but the may 2021 move right which was basically the low the start of what you know this uh, this massive trend to the upside and um and what this really represents is um a cheap and a bargain area right so the dollar was obviously a bargain down here at the 89s um 90 areas right so this is represents cheap Right. You should always look at um, uh, try to look at the market in terms of value. Yeah. And so the, the, the highs would be considered expensive. Right. So just imagine that's expensive. So 50 percent between, you know, bargain prices and cheap prices and expensive prices because prices didn't go any higher. There were no willing buyers to buy who thought that that was, a, you know, an absolute bargain price. If they did, then prices would go higher. Right. Um, and in between that is what's known as fair value. Right. FV. 
fair value. And so what we also have in alignment with fair value and price and the dollar is coming actually down to that fair value, I'm not saying that it is going to, but just in the context of where fair value, you know, potentially um, is. Um, and also what you do have as well is if we take the year to date um, low, right? So 2022 lows, 2022 highs, and we apply that same logic, but apply a, you know, many people would uh, uh, consider, you know, Fibonacci uh, retracements uh, to be uh, good technical levels in order to get involved in uh, in trades. And they, you know, are kind of like self-fulfilling prophecies because people just tend to take trades randomly around certain areas, not actually understanding what Fibonacci actually is. And it's just all Fibonacci really is, is uh, telling you where the discount is, right? 38.2%, right? Uh, level, right? is telling you that between a high right, which is basically an expensive area and a low, right, and that low can be subjective to a lot of traders, right, some some traders will look at a chart and say, well, that's the low right there or something like that, you know, a swing low, that might be a low, that might be a low, right, but we're doing from, a, from an objective low, basically everyone knows that this is the yearly low, right, there's no debate in that, right, and so from the yearly low to the yearly high and looking at what the dollar has done all year, uh, Fibonacci is just telling you that this is a discount, right? So this is a price discount from the absolute high. So 38.2% retracement is a 38.2% discount. And a 61.8% uh, Fibonacci level is just a 61.8% discount because 50% is fair value. And so when you tally that up in terms of, you know, just confluence and looking at yearly lows, right? The yearly low to the yearly high, Fibonacci, and looking at, sorry, Fibonacci would be here, and just an overall dollar move from the absolute low where the move started from to the absolute high, you have actually some decent confluence around this 102s. Also in line with what we would look at, which is um, demand zones, right? We're looking at a demand zone. And so that represented an area of value. Why? Because prices ended up making what? New highs, right? This was considered expensive, right right here at one point before we knew you know what was happening so imagine you didn't know what was happening there that at, at, on the on the 13th of may yeah was considered expensive because prices didn't make new highs so when prices pulled back you know this obviously became cheaper and more of a bargain price to buy the dollar at when prices made new highs and started making new highs this then started becoming more and more of again a bargain area people would think oh i wish i would have bought uh, the dollar back down here when prices are up here. And by the way, there's a difference between price and value. Price is not always reflected in value and value isn't always reflected in price, right? Uh, they're two different things. Don't get them, uh, they're not, you know, uh, don't get them, um, don't think that they are the same thing, right? Because price eventually shows its hand and will display in price eventually right sometimes it takes it can take days sometimes it can take weeks and even sometimes it can take months something can be undervalued for a month or two right but anyways um the point being is that from a technical analysis perspective we do have um some ultimate you know dollar lows to dollar highs as well as yearly fibonacci lows and highs all aligning within this um, demand zone around the 102.50s to 101s. And so I think this is a really nice area to look for any kind of dollar buys. The reason why I'm long on the dollar still is because I believe that the dollar is the dog with the least fleas in terms of, um, you know, uh, fundamentally, right? When you look at the, the dollar economically, when you look at it from a, I mean, even from a monetary policy perspective, they're not, you know, they're not, they're not like the Bank of Japan where they're not hiking. They're still looking to hike. Now, one of the um, major factors in the dollar going higher or lower, at least in the short term, is consumer prices index because that leads on to... Um, whether the central bank federal reserve is going to continue hiking rates aggressively or in fact they're going to be a bit more dovish in their hikes and try to um, limit the amount of hikes that they do right so anyways 
Um, let's get into uh, this Bloomberg article, which is basically just summarizing, um, you know, um, what what is likely to come. And so, Federal Reserve, while the Fed is expected uh, to begin uh, tempering the pace of monetary policy tightening this week uh, with a half point hike, the rate hike for overnight bank lending will continue to be lifted early into 2023. Um, so, another 50 basis point hike. Um, basis point boost would amount to 4.25 percentage points worth of interest rate increases over 2022, a year that saw inflation soar to a four decade high and left inflation, uh, left, sorry, left policy makers scrambling. And again, if you're watching this and thinking to yourself, mm, I'm not too sure what's going on um, and how that kind of relates to any trades. And this is the reason why this webinar is so important, as well as some of a lot of the um, other uh, fundamental analysis webinars that I do have on my um, channel as well. So you can check those out. But this really, you know, breaks down this, this webinar will really kind of break it down to the bare bones and, you know, um, allow you to kind of understand um, the jargon and what's going on in terms of, um, you know, why these things are important. Anyways, the Fed officials who conclude, so also as well, the, the US uh, inflation is moderating, but still running hot. Yeah, so um, inflation is slightly coming down, you can see, but from the perspective of, um, you know, is it trending towards the 2% target, which is actually the, the, the Fed's, you know, um, mandate to get inflation down to that 2% target, or um, is this just a pullback before prices, or, or say it is really prices, because inflation is prices, inflation goes higher. So um, the Fed officials who conclude their two-day policy meeting Wednesday will get one final peek at the key inflation metric uh, when the government on Tuesday issues the November Consumer Prices Index, the economists project a 0.3% increase in the overall and core measure that excludes food, food and fuel on an annual basis. Both gauges are seen moderating. And so the hope is, is that inflation starts to come down. And if inflation is looking like it's coming down then the dollar is going to end up coming down the reason why or likely to end up coming down and the reason why is because then the um again as i said before the federal reserve won't necessarily need to potentially hike as much and then the market has to revalue what the dollar is worth right so you might see prices come down to the 103s and even down to the 102s twos in the short term but um, I say that short term because ultimately I do think the dollar is again a buy, right? I'm not looking to short the dollar just yet. Um, I do think the dollar is a buy because um, there are worse, there are problems happening in in Europe and other countries and in the UK that is going to sh definitely show their hand and um, money. I think is still going to uh, um, be in the dollar. And the dollar is going to find a floor at some point. Anyways, um, that's where we are. A bit of in depth analysis on on the dollar but if the dollar by the way if, if cpi comes out you know as seen as um you know higher than expected or comes out as expected possibly and that's taking it taken as in, inflation being stubborn and coming down then what that does is is that it puts pressure on the fed to continue hiking which would then support the dollar and you could see this um the 104s as a bit of a flaw and you're probably going to see the dollar uh, start to uh, rise so looking at dollar yen and so all eyes really again are on this um this uh the the, the dollar um inflation uh, the us inflation figures so i'll delete this demand zone um and again that is really going to drive any of these uh prices so if you do want to get involved in a potential dollar short trade and you're really looking at this uh, supply zone here. You've got another supply zone here to buy the yen against the dollar. If you're looking at that, price could come up and then look for that as a short. If you're looking for any kind of long trades, CPI comes out and it's decent, then you're looking at a pullback and then a move to the upside. Technically, is what you're, um, yeah, is what you uh, should be doing, anyways. Again, nobody knows what's going to happen with CPI. Um, but you know, until you know Tuesday, that's when we're going to get the uh, the data. So um, the the analysis is going to be the same for pretty much all um, uh, <clears throat> all dollar pairs. Again, this demand zone is going to be more driven by again fundamentals. And you know, I say this all the time, right? To to, to traders, is that um, 
technically, you know, price typically isn't driven technically. It might be driven technically in the short term, very short term, um, because there's lots of profit taking going on and things like that. But over the medium to long term, if you want to call it swing trading, um, you know, uh, uh, prices are always driven by either fundamental analysis and value. Uh, which determines value or risk sentiment which again still determines you know the value of a currency and exchange rate and so again we're at a bit of a crossroads on the dollar will the dollar go higher or lower um again this is going to be driven by what you know cpi comes out so if you want to get ahead of the uh of, of cpi and make a bit of a gamble then brilliant you know this is going to be a great area to look for any kind of long trades if you believe that the dollar is going to strengthen and you know, CPI isn't going to come out as uh, as low as they expected or fall as, uh, as low as they expected or it's going to be positive for the dollar. But if not, then you're looking at probably look, um, buying the uh, Swiss franc or any pe uh, currencies against the dollar on a, on a bit of a pullback to the upside before looking at getting short. Um, dollar CAD, again, same story. CAD has been a bit weak recently, although they came out with a interest rate hike. Um, it was actually seen as a dovish hike, uh, meaning that the uh, 50 basis points had already been kind of uh, a bit priced in to a certain degree, even though the, the market was talking about a 25 basis point hike uh, for the CAD. Um, but what made it a dovish, bit more of a dovish hike was the fact that what was coming um, is their tone on future hikes. And so, you know, I think the CAD, just like the uh, the US as well, are looking to reduce their, their, their hikes. And so that is seen as, you know, having more of a dovish tone. So if you do want to buy the, uh, the dollar, then you're looking at any kind of pullbacks into demand. Nearest demand zone, as it's made a technical new high, actually is going to be right there. So demand, and then you've got another zone. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Actually, you've got all of this would have been demand as well. So let me delete that. So any pullbacks into this zone, and again, you probably want to have a bit of confluence with uh, support if you get a wide zone of demand. And so um, I think probably here looks like a decent area of uh, support where you've got support and resistance. So one three fours. If you're looking at buying the uh, the dollar, if you're looking to sell the dollar against the Canadian dollar, then you're looking at a pullback too. In fact, I should really drag this down here. Yeah, I don't know why it's there. Yeah. So the one three sevens one one. That's where you want to try and look for short trades on the dollar. But um, again, not really a pair that I'm interested in. New Zealand dollar. Um, making higher highs this has also been driven as well by china china zero uh covid policy right um and so the commodity currencies like the australian dollar and the, and the new zealand dollar have been, have been benefiting from um the potential that the uh, China may start to reopen um, because if China start to reopen their economy and uh, reduce their zero COVID policy, then um, that should have a, a, um, an effect on the uh, growth of the Chinese economy, which the New Zealand and Australian economies will directly benefit from because of you know geographically trade partner wise and so um there's rumors the rumors are is that you know that was that is basically what's happening now um it's been quite mixed a bit of a very actually a bit of but a very hard read um because there's such a difference of opinions in terms of you know what the effects of the zero covid policy whether they're going to lift it whether they're not um but uh in 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 the short term i think traders have been um anticipating that it will you know happen and have a positive effect um, and also as well that um, means that risk becomes more on than off and if risk comes on then money comes tends to come out of uh, the dollar and into um, uh, commodity currencies like the uh, New Zealand dollar um, and so that's been um, really kind of also weighing on the US dollar so you've just seen really these zones being taken out, these supply zones being taken out. Um, but I think also as well going into uh, um, 
the new year. Uh, the, the, there's a lot of banks that are talking about the dollar strengthening. Um, the fact that, in fact, the China COVID uh, policy might not actually be beneficial in the short term. And it's more of a 2023, second half of 2023 story, or at least the spring at the earliest. And so we come up to an interesting point, a very interesting uh, zone you know, considering again, this was a bargain for the for the dollar, for the US dollar, and this was an expensive area for the dollar, right? And now we're coming up to a very, very uh, um, interesting technical point. So I wouldn't be surprised if, for example, CPI, obviously we need a catalyst, CPI comes out, you know, maybe higher as expected, and then, um, you know, the, the, the Fed remain hawkish, and then it just starts to turn all of the... Um, all of the dollar pairs but of course nothing is for certain and uh, again it's really kind of just waiting for that uh, CPI data to come out um, but for me yeah it's it's those are the main zones if that zone gets taken out there is another zone right above it from a supply zone perspective if you do want to get uh, uh, long on the US dollar and then you've got a bit of a gap in the next uh, zone is all the way up up, up at the top right here and yeah, so yeah, so we've got um, some interesting levels just above us, and it depends on whether you want to, you know, get long or short. If you're trying to get long, then you're looking for at least a decent pullback down into, you know, the the one oh threes. Because if this, if you're looking to buy the New Zealand dollar, obviously, then this is considered actually a bargain price down at the lows, and this is considered potentially expensive. And so you never want to buy at highs, right? Buy low, sell high, not buy high, sell low. So. Um, looking for a pullback into a decent retracement before looking at getting long on the New Zealand dollar. Uh, pound dollar now, pound dollar has just defied the odds, right? I think I've got in around here, ended up losing that trade, but I'm actually back in on this trade. I did say that last week. I said if I lose this, uh, this trade, which was a supply zone from around here, then I'm just going to get in um, and, and continue to get in because I think the downside is uh, is worth it and um and the pound uh, let's go to um do, 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 where are we i'm trying to look at where the pound is right here we are bank of england so the bank of england is widely expected to boost its benchmark lending rate uh, a half point to 3.5 percent which would be the highest since 2008 with inflation at 41 year high of 11.1 percent and consumers increasingly expecting elevated prices for the next few years policymakers led by governor Andrew Bailey said uh, have said that they will act forcefully to prevent a wage price spiral which is basically inflation so what you're seeing here is the hawks and the doves let me just zoom out a little bit and uh, you can see on the easing end of things um, I don't think anyone's really looking to ease but um, on the holding side I should say um, you really kind of got two but everyone else is looking at um, you know hiking in on the uh, on the monetary policy committee members so yes zero means neutral and plus two is very very hawkish and so um, the reason why they're not all out going uh, or going all out is for really a simple reason and again I talk about this in the webinar that I will release on on uh, Monday is that Monday or Tuesday is that hikes um, have a neck can have a negative effect on the economy so it's all good trying to you know say all right then well you know hiking appreciates a currency but it can also devalue a currency or it's known as a, a bit of a dovish hike um, if the economy can't support those rate hikes and so um, that's what's spoken about in this uh, paragraph it says a darkening outlook for the uh, for the economy makes this month's decision a more difficult than last yeah so i'll read that again a darkening outlook for the economy makes this month's decision a more difficult than the last it's because again the uk is pretty much one of the one of the worst um performing um uh g10 uh, economies and so if you keep hiking and you're going into a recession or you're contracting that's what's known as stagflation right stagflation oh sorry uh is what is uh one second let me just find the the article did i close it Right, yeah. So here it is. So Divis Bank of England divisions on rates set to deepen with UK stagflation outlook because you have 
um, high inflation and poor um, economic poor economic growth and so um, yeah so there's problems with just you know hiking you can't just hike willy-nilly you have to you have to really think about what those hikes are going to have on the economy so a recession is now underway and expected to last into 2024 and households are suffering from the tightest cost of living squeeze on record energy prices are at least six times higher than than usual and colder than normal weather is buffeting the um the uk for the first time since last winter so um problems yes you know we all know or we should know that hikes typically do have a um an appreciative uh, effect on a currency or that's the the goal anyway but um you know you have to take into account um the economy when when looking at those hikes it's not just as simple as you know hiking and then we appreciate the currency because there are knock-on effects, there are side effects to that, and massive side effects to that. So, for me, even if you know the British pound or the, the dollar are looking to you know ease up on their hiking cycle, um, I think that the British pound are going to be entering into a recession sooner. And so, because of that, I'm willing to continue to buy the U.S. dollar because I do think that the recession for a U.S. dollar, if they do enter into one, is you know, further out into 2023, whereas the UK will be in a recession um, sooner. And so for me, that trade idea, although maybe in the short term, it might not play out. I think in the long term, I'm willing to buy the continue to buy the dollar because nothing really moves in a straight line either, right? Even though you've seen something like that happen, um, you do get pullbacks. And hopefully, you know, if I, if I do time this correctly, we do time this correctly and it is a pullback. And while you're in the trade, the pullback can turn into an actual reversal. Um, then that's where the money is made, right? I don't mind losing, you know, a few trades, right? Going higher. Let's say, for example, I lose like, you know, two or three trades. That's cool. But if I'm going for, you know, 10, 15, 20 to one type trades, then that is, you know, worth the risk. You don't have to have a high win rate, you know, and focus on win rates all the time. If you understand that fundamentals can, can get you those large uh, wins, Anyways, where we're at now, some very interesting, very interesting, um, um, you know, level. And although, again, I think in the short term, if CPI doesn't work out or CPI comes out, it's trending, you know, lower and the dollar does, you know, does drift higher. Um, I still couldn't bring myself to buy the British pound, to be fair. And I think, again, I'd look for any kind of short trades to the uh, to the upside or to the downside if, it, if prices do come a bit higher. Um, if you do want to be a buyer of the pound, then you do have some demand zones just below you. Uh, if you feel that that is, you know, a trade that you want to get involved in. But for me, I am a uh, still a dollar buyer for now. Um, and I say for now because obviously things can change. But um, but yeah, let's see what happens uh, this week. Um, Moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar pretty much in the same boat, right? Everyone's at the same boat, major level of uh, a major technical level, or I say a major, but a, a definitely uh, an interesting level uh, technically uh, on the euro dollar. And um, again, going to the euro. Oh, as well, um, just to back up kind of and go back to the... Uh, to the pound one second there was uh, some analysis from a bank that i thought was interesting and it says the pound underperformance set to re-emerge and this is from um a bank called mufg um and uh, they're quite a big uh, bank in um in japan it says the pound has been performing impressively and the new government and improved fiscal credibility have led to a period of outperform out performance for the pound right so this the pound has been actually outperforming of what is was you know to probably expected for them uh indeed we have pointed out taking a period from uh, before the fiscal crisis emerged pound performance has been impressive since the end of august uh through now the pound is the top performing g10 currency it's crazy uh, having advanced 4.9%, we put this down to not just the change in government and a more uh, credible fiscal policy, but also the strong improvement in global risk um, since the middle of October when equity markets globally hit a low point. But 
it is still hard to tally those improved factors with the scale of the pound strength we have had and we are skeptical over this continuing, right? So we expect underperformance from here and uh, everything fundamentally is pointing to, uh, again, the pound underperformance. You know, we've had, I've been reading, you know, we've been reading lots of banks that have been saying from everyone from, everyone from Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan to HSBC and MUFG have been talking about, you know, not buying really the uh, the pound and pound underperforming. Yeah, prices have been going to the upside, which to be fair, just gives the institutions um, better prices. Um, you know, it's, it's a headache for us retail traders, but um, you know, the smart money who have wider stops or use options and futures, etc., they they um, can, um, uh, they can um, you know, still, um, you know, get in for for a cheaper price because their uh, their 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 uh, the method of entering are more to do with um, time based rather than uh, price based. Anyways, going on to back onto the euro, euro dollar. So the euro dollar pretty much again in the same kind of boat as the pound. I think a lot of outperformance, underperformance from the from the dollar, outperformance from from the euro. And uh, looking at the European Central Bank, uh, the, the ECB will probably hike rates by 50 basis points this week after inflation in the euro area slowed for the first time in, in um, one and a half years uh, last month. So again, the relationship between inflation, right, and interest rates, so they're likely to hike less because inflation is coming down. Exactly the same thing as what is happening in the US, yet with consumer price Growth still at 10%, a uh, third consecutive 75 basis point hike uh, or point move can't be completely excluded. And some um, of the more hawkish rate setters have suggested they'd back, uh, back up such a step. The governing council's uh, decision will be influenced by new quarterly economic fact, uh, forecasts, which will likely see a downgrade in growth and upgrade in inflation projections for 2023. So what's, so what again is, is a downgrade in growth and an upgrade in inflation, which means that that's called stagflation, right? Um, and so that's something that the US is not suffering with at the moment, or there's talk about stagflation in the US, only in Europe and the, and the UK. And so Europe area economic outlook worsened. And so we see, you know, basically from a GDP perspective, uh, 2022, um, 2023, we're looking at, you know, potential contraction. Um, and if you get two quarters of contraction, then you're going into, you know, pretty much a, a, a recession. And that's from a Bloomberg survey, by the way. So even though the ECB are likely to talk themselves up, Bloomberg survey says, in fact, something you know the opposite so who do you believe do you believe the bankers that are trying to make you uh you know um uh, i guess encourage optimism or you know the reality right and so um additionally policymakers are scheduled to decide our oh, key pillars of strategy talking about quantitative tightening anyways so for me again i think the um the euro is a is, is still a sell also, also as well to back that up, uh, we've got a Citibank uh, outlook. And one of the things that we were looking at with Citibank was um, their downside, right? So they talk about downside risks for the euro are periphery widening via ECB uh, quantitative tightening, a cold weather snap, which is basically what we're seeing, right? And talking about cold weather snaps, uh, Arctic weather finally hits Europe and will test energy supplies. The temperatures in Scandinavia are forecast to reach minus 23 Celsius. Heating demand rises as energy systems start to get tested and they're talking about potential blackouts. It says, it talks about the Arctic blast hitting Stockholm. Welcome, um, Stockholm was welcomed Friday to a fresh dusting of snow and skaters uh, came out and forced to enjoy the giant ice rink in the city's historic uh, Kunderstrat Garden, I think that's how you pronounce it, park. Um, the cold snap gripping the continent will continue into the in, into next week with forecasts for sub-zero temperatures in Germany and snow in parts of the UK. While the conditions will help add the festive spirit, they'll start to put pressure on energy supplies and are crucial uh, to Europe surviving the winter without blackouts, right? So that is um, important. So um, again, 
that affects G gross domestic products. So, you know, we can talk about Europe um, and prices in Europe going higher and higher um, if you want. But ultimately, if you look at the reality of things, can you see if, um, you know, you start to get blackouts, GDP starts to fall and contract? Why would anybody want to invest in in Europe? And that's where you start to see, you know, prices hopefully start to fall. No one knows exactly where it's going to turn, of course. Um, but for me, I'm going to be continue to be a buyer of the dollar over the over Europe simply because um, uh, I think that they're in a better position. Just that's it. So yeah, euro dollar. Those are the levels you're looking towards, either selling or buying. If you want to be a buyer of the euro, then you're looking for a pullback. I would say back into the one hundred threes before looking at going long. Um, Aussie dollar. Um, I would touch the. Uh, supply zone there again Aussie dollar benefiting from uh, potential uh, rumors surrounding China reopening and so you're seeing you know a slow grind higher and this probably may grind a bit higher also if um, again the big news about CPI comes out and if it comes out lower then at least in the short term to put it towards the end of the year you might see prices go to the upside but if CPI comes out uh, decent for the uh, US then probably best to see a bit of a reversal um aussie yen um aussie yen has come down a bit and again aussie yen is a is a is a um a signal for uh, for potential risk sentiment and if you start to see the japanese yen start to strengthen which it has over over the australian dollar um doesn't mean that every single time it goes down that risk sentiment is off and if it goes up then it's on but ultimately um i think that the risk sentiment um is probably still you know to the downside or, or more off than it is on and uh, I think um, it prices may start to come down here but not to forecast but if you do believe that the yen is a buy then you're looking for any pullbacks to the upside there if you're looking for a, a buy of the Australian dollar then you're still looking for a still a pullback down to the 90.5 and then or, or slightly lower the 90s before looking at going long and gold gold um, again is going to be dependent upon um, uh, do the dollar right do directly or inversely correlated uh, to gold um, is the dollar so uh, or the dollar is to gold and so um, with that being said again a, a very um, uh, prominent level we've come up towards the, the, the 18 um, round number and just above and so uh, prices will or are likely to go you know higher if you have um, dollar starts to weaken and if the dollar starts to weaken uh, it would usually be because there's some sort of fundamental or risk sentiment um, bias surrounding that I'm actually personally still um, uh, have a long bias on gold I know it's conflicting how can you be long dollar and long gold at the same time um, but you can have short term positions and long term positions I'm long term bullish on gold and so not necessarily trading gold but um but yeah, just uh, looking at that from a long term, longer term perspective, and I think any kind of pullbacks into a um, uh, a, a demand zone, especially if prices can come down um, to around here or the, or the lows, I think that's these areas here are definitely buying uh, opportunities. Because for now, what do we see? We see price. You know, gold was a bargain here. Gold was definitely a bargain. Um, at the 16, 14, 1600 level, and now we're seeing gold potentially at a previous expensive area. So I do think that if gold, if the dollar starts to strengthen and there's a pullback, then I do think that these areas here are decent buys for gold. Um, if you are looking at this from more from more of an investment perspective, from a trading perspective, um, yeah, it's, I would probably look for. A trade down at these absolute lows or at least beyond fair value of the overall uh, auction or the overall range so this is, would be what would be considered a range right prices between the high and its low and uh, for me if I'm looking to trade this it would have to be um, around fair value or you know below that before I look for actually a trading uh, opportunity um, anyways that's just me personally but not everyone um, is going to do that plus this isn't financial advice either so uh, take from it what you want anyways guys um, 
take care have a good week probably next week is going to be my last uh weekly video for the year because i do think that um after this week the markets are really going to slow down we're pretty much heading towards uh christmas and so um yeah next maybe sunday saturday sunday is probably going to be the last one for for at least the 2023 and so uh yeah i hope you have a great week um and uh, take care and speak to you all soon until the next video